In Asia, rice bowl is a familiar metaphor referring to one's livelihood or source of income. The staple food holds deeper meaning for two families whose rice bowls are literally rooted in rice, Kim Chu Kei Chong and Harians. The former with their Nyonia rice dumplings and the latter for their Nuomi Feng or Teacher style sticky rice. My Mokan Keki chef, Melvin Lee, and I made our first stop at the East Coast Road branch of Kim Chu Kei Chang, home of the famous Nyonia rice dumpling. There, we met third generation owner Edmund Wall, who joined forces with his brothers Desmond and Raymond to take their grandmother's food legacy to the next level. According to Edmund, the brand was founded in 1945 by their grandmother Lee Kim Chu, who started off as a street hawker, selling food her grandmother had taught her to make. After the World War, they had to find means to survive and the only skill set they had back in those days were their culinary skills, Edmund said. Operating out of a makeshift stall by a banyan tree on the corner of Jiu Chai Place and Everett Road. Kim Chu's rice dumplings stood out. With encouragement from her neighbors in the community and a bank loan secured with the help of then MP for Ju Chai Dr. Fong Kim Hang, she moved into a shop house at 60 Ju Chai Place. Her focus on perfecting her rice dumplings paid off, and her name has become a beacon of excellence for her descendants. On the second floor of their East Coast shop house, we were welcomed with a simple Paranokan lunch of chap chai and rice home cook by Edmund's mother Helen. It's actually survivor food for my family. My grandma, together with her maternal grandma, would go to the wet market to buy scraps of vegetables that had been discarded, and they would make a vegetable stew. He shared. My mum learned cooking from my grandma and she's like the version of Little Nyonia, where she had to pound and learn everything from the start. From the second generation to third. Edmund's mum has taught him well and he obliged us with a lesson in the art of wrapping their famous kechang. The first step involved pandan leaves, but not the aromatic type I was familiar with. So these are mangrove pandan leaves. These are the huge, gigantic ones, Edmund explained. At Kim Chu, two leaves layered and fanned atop each other are used to create a wider surface area for the filling. They need to be pre-soaked the day before, then boiled to prevent splitting during the wrapping process. The leaves were folded and held in a cone shape, then premium glutinous rice that had been soaked in water for eight hours was spooned in. A lean pop and winter melon mixture that had been cooked in lard was added, then topped with a second spoonful of the seasoned and spiced rice. Even under Eggman's expert tutelage. Folding the leaf parcels into the distinctive pyramid shape of Kei Chang required a dexterity neither Chef Melvin nor I possessed. But we had fun trying. Next came the tying. At Kim Chu, they use 100% cotton foot, great twine in place of colored nylon strings. The twine was wound twice round each parcel to secure the leaves, then tied with what Edmund referred to as a live knot. This was so customers can conveniently unwrap the Kei Chang with one tug of the string. Edmund also emphasized the importance of tying and hanging the dumplings from the same height to prevent tangling and to ensure they cook evenly in boiling water. He also recommended eating them at ambient temperature, not hot out of the pot. This was to better judge the quality because floss can't be hidden at ambient temperature. I found the glutinous rice tasty on its own. Its savory notes complemented by the spiced meat filling. Little chunks of candied winter melon added a touch of sweetness to each toothsome bite. For variety, chicken and vegetarian options are also available for Kim Chu's signature Nyonia Chang. Another bestseller was their EXO traditional salty chang, made from the same premium glutinous rice stuffed with dried scallop, dried oyster, whole chestnut, shirtake mushroom, fatty pork belly and salted egg yolk. 
larger in size due to its abundant meat and seafood filling, this rice dumpling was my favorite. It was a purely savory treat with a luscious mouthfeel. Chef Melvin agreed, I feel that a lot of people will have their own creation and rendition of Chang nowadays, right? But catching the balance of flavor, I think you guys did a fantastic job. Speaking of which, Edmund and his brothers previously held jobs in other fields, but spurred by their passion to preserve their Paranokan heritage, they returned to help their parents. Each brother oversees different aspects of the business. Desmond is the Director of Operations and Quality Control, while Raymond, an authority on cobaya, beading techniques and repair, is in charge of marketing and the boutique. With an interest in heritage and community, Edmund manages business development and corporate social responsibility. Kim Chu Kei Chong provides job opportunities to the marginalized or disadvantaged and offers them a safe place to work. The family have retained Grandma's original Ju Chai shop house, their food factory, and the East Coast Road branch serves as a retail and workshop space, as well as an official Singapore visitor center for tourists. The whole purpose is so that we can have this platform to share more about what it means to be Paranokan. When you translate the word Paranokan to English, it literally just means locally born descendants of foreigners. It's not so much about the marriage of races, it's actually about the marriage of cultures that defies who we are, Edmund said enthusiastically. At Kim Chu, the vision is to stay local, yet go global, so that grandma's legacy and culture is amplified beyond Singapore's borders for generations to come. Sharing their family's culinary heritage with a broader audience is also the goal for the third-generation owners of Harians, Alan Tyne and his wife Sharon. The Harian story also began with rice and the toy of a matriarch relying on her culinary skills to overcome tough times. After the tragic loss of her husband, Alan's grandmother Chien Gak Ng began selling Nuomi Fan, glutinous rice, from a pushcart along Taiyang Boru Road in the 1950s. His father began helping from the time he was five, enduring hardships and learning his mother's trade. By 1964, Ellen's grandma had saved up enough to afford a stall in Taiyang Boru Market, which his father took over in the 1980s. He extended their repertoire to include Nyonia K, made from recipes taught by grandma. In his early teens, Ellen began helping at the family stall. Noticing its lack of a name, he devised a portmanteau to distinguish it from the rest. Dad is Harry, Mum is Annie, so I coined the name Harian's Delights, not knowing that 40 years later, I'd be taking it back. Doing this, for a living, he shared. I was working for a multinational company and Dad was saying, you say you're coming back to help me. Is this going to really happen? So in 2013, after eight years working in Malaysia, Alan returned to Singapore with his family to fulfill his dad's wishes, swiftly expanding the business to multiple outlets. Chef Melvin and I met up with Alan and Sharon at their Suntec City Cafe for a taste of the dish that started it all. Glutinous rice was soaked overnight, drained and dry-steamed for up to an hour, then stir-fried in vegetable oil with peanuts. Garnished with crispy shallots. A dollop of sambal and a side of sweet glutinous rice, the dish looked deceptively plain. That's how the Teochew style is being done. Although it looks simple, but it's all full of flavor. Alan assured us. He was right. The sweet-savory combo was undeniably delicious. Each fragrant, glossy grain was separate and pleasantly chewy, with a spicy kick from the homemade sambal. It was my first encounter with Teochew style white, glutinous rice, and I was sure it wouldn't be my last. Fans of Nyonia K will be spoiled for choice with the selection at Harian's.
We devoured the classics in rapid succession, starting with a childhood favorite, brightly tinted rainbow lapis, steamed layer by colorful layer. Sharon explained that freshly squeezed coconut milk gave their desserts a natural sweetness. So their recipes required less sugar. Back then, the K lapis wasn't this colorful. It was just very muted colors, like pink and white, just very simple fare. Then when we took over, we wanted to appeal to the younger generations, Ellen said. We wanted to modernize the Nyonia K, Sharon added. Green orbs of pendant perfumed, coconut-coated perfection, the Ondonda was best eaten whole. Their liquid gula malacca centers explode with a gush so delightful, I had to stop myself from reaching for a third helping. Besides their popular KK, Harian's dining menu now includes hot food, like Bobby Pont. I am Bua Koluek and their signature Nyonia Loxa. We do one dish Paranokan meals at our outlets, very symbolic of the Paranokan culture. So, we are doing Grandma really proud. All done from scratch, Sharon said. Made to Ellen's exacting standards, the Nyona Loxa was served with prawns, fish cake slices, half a hardball egg, top out tofu puff, bean sprouts, and a sprinkle of chopped loxa leaves. The gravy, chunky from its ramper spice mix of herbs, spices, and heavy dried shrimp, was packed with umami flavor. If you like your Nyonia Loxa, really lemak rich, Harian's rich and coconut creamy version will appeal. Reflecting on his decision to return a decade ago, Alan said, I told Dad, for the past 50 years, you have been doing very well in the market stall, so what will happen in the next 50 years? So I decided that we should bring Harian's to a mall and perhaps to let more people know about us. Besides their Suntec City location, Harian's Nyonia table can be found at Buges Junction and Keppel Bay Tower. The brand also supplies to several five-star hotels in Singapore. But in a nod to their humble beginnings, their Tyong Boru store remains. The Harian story has been documented in a book written by Alan and Sharon's son Ethan, whose interest hints at the possibility the brand might continue into the fourth generation. The then 12-year-old was inspired by UNESCO's recognition of Singapore's hawker culture to interview his grandpa Harry and preserve his legacy. Ethan's heartfelt gesture holds profound significance for the family. Given Harry's passing in June last year, more than just the book title or their tagline, Happiness is Handmade is a reminder of their purpose and honors the generations that preceded them.